Olmos, who was also doing a film called American Me. Huh? No, that's uh, Stand and Deliver. American Me is basically the same movie as Blood and Blood Out. And he plays the same character that I play in Blood and Blood Out. Except my name is Montana, his name is Santana. <laughs> the main one. Yeah, that's me. And he's the middle middle in the other movie. Oh. And he is. And at that time, what had happened was originally that story was going to be a trilogy, three films. And it was going to start out the way American Me did in the 40s. And then it was going to be Blood and Blood Out. And if you remember the story of Blood and Blood Out, in the end, I get killed when I go visit my daughter. In the sequel to that, in the third film, my daughter was going to take my place and exact revenge against Nikola. That was going to be the third film. Taylor Hackford and Edward James Olmos were working together. In factor, the business part of movie making, the movie business. It's about money. And when you get to a particular stature, like an A-list actor or an A-list director, Taylor Hackford likes to control things and he also likes to get some of the money from the project. So, when you get an actor who wants to do the same thing, on the business end, they can knock heads. They can disagree a lot. And one will claim, hey, this is my project, as well as the other. That's one of the issues that came up here. And so, they decided they're going to split up. And they each took the story, and they did it in their own way. Eddie did American Me, Taylor Hacker did Blood and Blood Out. But while Eddie was preparing American Me, being that many of us were friends, he wanted me to work on American Me. I have a particular social political consciousness that I looked at the script and the difference between American Me and Blood and Blood Out, what the character that he wanted me to play was here, what the character that they wanted me to play here was saying. This is where my social political consciousness factored in. I was fortunate that I could go in either direction, but to me it was important that a character that I was portraying say things like, we got to educate ourselves. We have to work together. Black and brown have to unite. We have to get out of here. Look at what's happening to us. Do you think it's by accident that we're here? Look at who's in charge. And as long as we keep fighting each other, they love it. So I wanted to work here to be able to say that. Over here, the role that they wanted me to do was puppet. The character that kills his own brother. And I appealed to Eddie and said, Eddie, we're the guys that are supposed to do things different than Hollywood. We have to have some redemption here. I said, if I were to do this role, then I would have to say to you, if you, if you insist that he does that to his brother, which historically the character did not do, then after he does it, he has to take himself off. Because there's no way that I as a person who wants to change things about how we're portrayed can live with that. I can't. And if it was, it was, well, that's the way the character is written, I would have said, well, then write it the way the character really was. He didn't kill his brother. That's why they killed him. So I was fortunate that I had those choices, but that's why I was hired for Blood In, Blood Out. And uh, it, was an, it was an amazing experience. It really was. You know, there's a kind of sobering situation when, well, first of all, the, the research is difficult because you're not in prison, so you can't do it. So we were 
relegated for me to, I happened to be visiting someone and their neighbor had been in San Quentin. So I talked with them. And then there was um, a book that was the Chicano Khan that we were all given to read. And then, to me, the important part was the inner character, which was the psychological aspect, the cultural aspect, social political outlook, economic background, all of those things that factored in that then I was able to incorporate into the character. And that was the only way that in the midst of a war that they're having, uh, that he would become vulnerable to an African-American character. How is it that this African-American character is able to kill him when they're warring with each other? Why would he even be next to him? That's where my background came in, my discussion with the writer, my discussions with the director. Because I had been a farm worker, we, I, and I discussed it with the other actor, Teddy, Teddy Wilson, great actor, unfortunately passed away two weeks after we finished. Um, and so we sat down and, we sa and I said, this is the only way that I see that my character can be vulnerable. And that is, there is something that is commonly, that is a common mis misconception about being a farm worker and what you do out there. And so my character having that background knows that when you work in the produce and it's the grapes, the act that you perform is not picking grapes. Because that would mean that you're doing this. You have as an implement something like a rug knife and you go in there and you cut it. You cut the vine with the blossom on it, with all the grapes. So in other words, if you have worked there, then you say, I cut me some grapes, not I pick some grapes. And so the character of Wallace, the African American in the next cell, he's talking to, he thinks he's going to endear himself to my character by saying, oh, my back hurts because I did all that field work and, you know, the hoe, that short-handled hoe. And to me, that's like, Come on, who are you kidding here? And so I ask him, hey Wallace, did you ever pick any grapes? Bingo, goes up in his head. No, I never picked any grapes, but I done cut me a bunch. Operative word is cut. So now my character says, oh, this guy did work in the fields. Don't be so paranoid, you know? And he says, you got any smokes? Yeah, sure, here. You know, and the relationship is established. The trust, he's disarmed, boom. He's able to do it. So, your experiences, your education, all that you are can enhance what you can become, what you can do. If you're a musician and you're an actor, like, um, um, he was in Ray. What's the actor's name in Ray? You guys remember the movie Ray? What are they Jamie, Jamie Foxx. He's a piano player. He was, he's perfect for the role. He's a piano player. Great. Academy Award. <laughs> we all do. It's the makeup that makes us young. <laughs> but, um, Getting into the business and making the choice to do it has to be that. And it has to be because it's something that you choose to do because you love it and you're going to enjoy it. Because if you're doing it for the money, if you're not happy without money, you're not going to have to be happy with it. Trust me. And you've seen it happen. And if you can't be happy doing it, why do it? Why make yourself miserable and others miserable around you? There's a lot of people in the industry that are just like that. I've experienced it. And I feel very and truly sorry for them. Because it is so enjoyable. I have so much fun. And there's a reason why in states they call them plays. Because that's what you do. You play act. You're pretending to play cowboys and Indians or, you know, whatever. Gladiator or 
doctor, lawyer, astro.